Hey everyone, welcome back to Williamson Ridge Outdoors. Today we are out in the hay field and we are getting a little bit of hay cut. It's been raining for the last couple of days and I'm hoping that it's not too wet right now and that uh, you know this actually will end up drying out over the next few days. So what I'm gonna do is just get it all cut down and I'm gonna go through and tet it and kind of fluff everything up and hopefully the ground underneath will dry out enough to let the hay dry out also. And if I have to, I'll tet it you know, more than once and just try to get it to stay up off the ground and get everything to dry out at once. It's supposed to get up into the high 80s and possibly even the 90s and the sun shining. So it should dry out, but it's kind of it's kind of iffy. I've never cut it this way before. Usually the ground is usually pretty dry whenever I cut the hay. But I really don't have any options right now because I'm trying to get this cut while I'm on vacation and get it put away because this first cut of the year is the biggest cut. It's tough to cut the hay, rake, and bale the hay with one tractor and one person. So it's a big job, but it's an enjoyable job. I really enjoy cutting the hay and getting this product, you know, pretty much out of, or the finished product out of it. But I couldn't be happier with the results and the way that the hay is looking this year. We have used our Super Lime Plus to bring our pH level and stuff up on our, on our soil and it has made such a drastic difference in how thick and full our hay is. Of course, we have fertilized also on top of that, but whenever we done our soil test, you know, our soil test went from 4.9 to now 5.9. So we raised it up a full point and it has made a drastic difference of how much grass is coming up and how little weeds are coming up. Now the places that were really, really bad with weeds, we sprayed those to kill them out but then the places that really weren't all that bad and just had a few weeds here and there, then we, we haven't sprayed that with any type of a herbicide or anything. So, but there's a whole lot more grass coming up in those areas because our pH balance, you know, is better for the grass. When you have a less acidic soil, then you're gonna have more grasses and stuff come up versus the more acidic soil, the weeds like that. So anyways, we're gonna get right into it. I'm gonna cut some hay. Follow along with us over the next couple of days because we're gonna be cutting the hay, raking and belling, and I'll probably put that over a couple of videos, but I'll kind of keep you up to date on what's going on. So let's jump in here and get this hay cut. How nice that hay looks this year. That is so thick.
we're back down at the house. I haven't finished mowing yet. I've still got about three or four acres left out there. So I noticed that I started missing a little section out on the end of my cutter bar. So I knew that probably a knife section broke or came loose or something, but I wasn't really expecting this. So the knife section actually came loose from the rivets and turned and is stuck in between an existing tooth and another one. And it was rubbing on this going back and forth. And I thought I smelled something get hot and I heard something change in the sound, but that thing stuck in there pretty tight and it's extremely hot, which is why I'm not touching it right now. You can kind of see where it's forcing a little bit up on the guard and stuff here and it kind of wore this a little bit more than what it should. But it's not bad. It's just a tiny little bit, but you can just kind of see that that is a little bit shinier than what the rest of it is. And what some of these down here are where they don't really have pressure against them. You can even see like these still have like grass stain and stuff on them. But where this one got kind of wedged in there, it kind of run these a little bit hotter. So anyways, I was kind of expecting that anyways, a, a knife section being gone or broke or something. So I knew I was gonna have to repair it. But then when I got down here and I was parking the tractor for a minute because I was gonna go get some tools and everything to, to change this out, I had the, the tractor just kind of resting and the, uh, the cutter bar resting up in the air. And I shut the tractor off and I heard it start leaking down. And I was like, uh-oh, there's something either come loose or something broke or busted. So then I noticed that my hydraulic hose has a busted place in it. And I'm gonna have to get that fixed before I do too much. I may be able to go ahead and kind of finish the job, but it definitely is busted and started leaking. So if it's not one thing, it's another, it seems like. So I don't know, I, I don't really want to run it leaking because then you're using excessive hydraulic oil and that is expensive right now. So I'm gonna take a few minutes, take me a lunch break, and I'm probably gonna run out to the local tractor supply and hopefully they'll have a hose that I can kind of match up to, to fit on here and I'll just replace the hose and forget about it. But what I originally came down here to do was actually change that knife section and get my drone because I was gonna get you a little bit of drone footage of doing some mowing but i'm also going to go through and use the drone to kind of take pictures and video and document the hay field whenever you cut the hay the sections that have weeds those leaves really you know are kind of spread out and you're seeing the back side of them so they show up as a really like almost white color so i can take the drone and kind of fly it over and take a picture and i'll see the areas that have more weeds and stuff in there so that i'll know where I need to focus my spray and stuff at in order to get the most out of my weed killer. That's one reason I wanted the drone to begin with is to be able to go out in the hay field and check things out. And you know, whether it's checking on the horses, I can fly the drone out through there and check on the horses and see where they're at in the field without having to walk all the way out there. Cause it's a little bit over a half mile from the house all the way out to where the end of the field is at. Also, I can do things like that I'm talking about and kind of document the thicker areas of weeds and stuff that we have. And then that way I'll know where to focus that spray. So let's head to Tractor Supply. I'm gonna see if I can find me a hose to fix this. If not, then I may just try to put some sort of tape on there or something in order to kind of get by. I don't know if a tape, it's, it's more of a seep, it's not spraying out. So maybe the tape will kind of help keep some of the fluid from leaking out, but we'll just have to see.